Joe Thomas, you can follow him on Twitter, at Joe Thomas 73 NFL Network analyst, former Browns All-Pro offensive tackle, now working for the NFL Network. Joe, thanks for joining us. If you're a Browns fan, how do you feel today? I think you feel great, and they should feel great because – Going into this season, everybody wanted to tell them about how great they were. And you always worry about, you know, stubbing your toe in that first game. I know they didn't win, but they beat Kansas City in that game if you watch it from start to finish. And it's just a matter for them now of just learning how to finish down the stretch. This is a team that turned the entire uh, organization and franchise around when Kevin Stefanski got there. The mentality has completely changed. The culture has changed. Now just learning how to win down the stretch. But, I mean, having the Chiefs who two years ago they won the Super Bowl, last year they were in the Super Bowl. A lot of people thought that they probably could have won that Super Bowl. And going into their place in week one and really outplaying them, I don't think – that uh, that is anybody's uh, something that anybody should be ashamed of if you're a Browns fan. But we're waiting for a signature moment from Baker Mayfield. Is that fair to say we're still waiting for that moment where you go, okay, that's what elite quarterbacks do? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, last year against the Ravens, he had that moment, but unfortunately Lamar Jackson was a little bit better down the stretch. Um, and they were, they weren't able to win the game. So you don't really think of Baker having that signature moment, but He's still such a young quarterback. If he continues to play the way he did yesterday, the rest of this season, he's going to get plenty of those moments in this season right now. He's ready for it. What was more disappointing for the fan bases, the Bills losing at home to the Steelers (laughs) or the Packers losing the way they lost to the Saints in Florida? Uh, The Packers, obviously, because everybody's talking about the last dance for the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, like this is their moment. They're going to win the Super Bowl. Expectations are sky high. And to be able to go and just completely a turd against a team that really had so many questions going into this game. You know, how how are they going to replace Drew Brees? How are they going to be able to focus on this game with the hurricane displacing so many of them and their family, playing the game in Jacksonville, and then coming out and stomping all over the Packers, really in a defensive effort. I know Jameis Winston had five touchdown passes, but it was that defense that completely stifled the Packers and turned Aaron Rodgers into a common-looking quarterback. That was really impressive, and a lot of credit has to go to Sean Payton and the job he'd done with getting that team ready, focusing through all the distractions, and making Jameis Winston uh, from a turnover machine to a touchdown machine. But also, there does the defense usually start out ahead of offenses, in in uh, in your opinion, and what you experienced when you played? Yeah, they do because they don't have as many things to learn. They don't have as many things to install. It's much more instinctual um, as far as just learning how to go out and tackle and run and hit like there's a lot of plays on defense don't get me wrong but offense is so much more about detail communication um installing new plays reacting to what the defense is doing to you so typically development wise the defense is way ahead but when you have a guy like aaron Rodgers who's been around forever and they've been in this offense now several years under matt lafleur uh i don't think that necessarily is true in this case they should have been able to come out and they should have been firing on all cylinders. It's not like this is the first time that they've played in this offense, and it's not like this is Aaron Rodgers' fifth or sixth year in the NFL. I mean, he's seen everything that's out there. He's got an experienced offense. There's no excuse to have a clunker like they did on Sunday. Is Chandler Jones a Hall of Famer? I don't think he has Hall of Fame credentials yet, like if he retired tomorrow, but certainly the way he played in the game on Sunday, he's got Hall of Fame talent, and he's building that Hall of Fame resume um, to be an all pro, to be a pro bowler, you can do that in one season to be a hall of famer. You got to do that over nearly almost a decade, uh, of football. And so but he's got he's 102 got some, sacks right I, now. I think you, certainly there's the number, right? Right. That's a big number, but without the longevity, I think he becomes one of those guys that you talk about, but I don't think gets in at this point, but certainly he's right there. I mean, he, a few more seasons like he's been having, and I think he definitely can be a Hall of Famer. What's the most sacks you gave up in a game? Uh, I don't think I've ever given up a sack, Dan. It was always the quarterback's <laughs> fault, right? No, I remember there was a game um, where I gave up two sacks, um, like sort of in the middle part of my career against the Falcons, 
And I was really frustrated by it. But, you know, as an offensive lineman, we're always telling ourselves, well, you know, the quarterback was in the wrong spot. He held on to the ball too long. And so um, it really wasn't my fault. Yeah, they're going to give me the credit. I'll take the credit. Yeah, it was my fault. But you always got to talk your way out of it like, a you know, a high school kid. Well, I was late for curfew, but, uh, you know, I hit a cat on the way home and <laughs> so I had to find the owner of the cat. And then, you know, you, you always make those excuses in your head. Did you ever yell at a, get mad at a quarterback because he might have cost you a sack because he held on to the ball too long or didn't step up in the pocket? Yes. Uh, I yelled in my head and typically instead of yelling at him directly, because I know that's kind of unproductive, what I would do is I just wouldn't help him up. Like, you know, usually if, if you see the quarterback land on the ground, <laughs> it's a lineman's culture to go right over, help your ball carrier up, help your quarterback up, especially if you gave up the sack. Like, wait, oh, wait, what was the name of that sorry. quarterback? I can't remember. I can't even remember all the quarterbacks that I played with that started with me, but well, I, that I was, definitely you played with a lot, a lot of quarterbacks in Cleveland. A lot of quarterbacks back there. There was a lot of quarterbacks back there, but I definitely, instead of helping them up, I would just turn my head and walk right back to the huddle. That was his way of knowing that I was very displeased with what he did on that play. What game surprised you the most yesterday? It was the Packers, right? Because okay. living in Wisconsin, I mean, everybody had high expectations. That was what the conversation was about the entire offseason, how this was their last dance. They were going to win the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers was super motivated. He finally, you know, kind of got a little bit what he wants. So he's a little bit more happy. But maybe what we want from an Aaron Rodgers is a pissed off Aaron Rodgers. Maybe, maybe that's what he needs to get the best out of himself and to get the best out of his teammates because – what we saw of Aaron Rodgers was not what I recognized as an Aaron Rodgers performance. When you have a rookie quarterback, uh, what's that like for the offensive lineman of knowing what your job is or how does that job change when you have a rookie quarterback? Well, it makes your job a lot harder because like I mentioned, I, I don't think I've ever given up a sack because the quarterback was in the wrong spot uh, on every single one of those sacks. But that's the issue with a, a rookie quarterback. And we saw it a little bit with Trevor Lawrence this weekend, right? They're either not in the right spot because they dropped too deep, their footwork wasn't right, um, or they're holding onto the ball too long. They're not going through the progressions the right way. And so you deal with all those things as rookies because they got so much on their play. The quarterback position has the most to learn out of any position in the NFL by far. And it's so much of it is decision-making, getting the football out on time. And so a lot of times when they're thinking about what's the coverage doing, what's the pressure, do I need to change the protection? They forget about some of the little details that, okay, maybe I'm supposed to take five steps and not seven. If I hit my, my seventh step, I need to step up and I need to hitch up because otherwise I'm going to be standing at 10 and a half yards and the line is blocking for a spot at nine yards. And so as a lineman, it's the worst feeling in the world where your guy turns and runs up field and you turn and you feel like you're running him by. And all of a sudden out of the corner of my left eye, I can see the quarterback and he's standing not where he's supposed to be. And I'm like, Oh crap, I got, I got to turn the jets on to try to push this guy past. But at that point it's already too late. So it's just part of dealing with a, a, a rookie, a young quarterback is dealing with those moments where oh, he didn't do what he was supposed to, but that's sort of the cost of doing business with a rookie. If you're blocking for Ben Roethlisberger, or you're blocking for somebody who has some mobility, like the difference in, you know, because Buffalo didn't get to Ben Roethlisberger yesterday, and he's not moving, he's not running, outrunning anybody. Um, you know, the different philosophy that you have when you have somebody who has some uh, elusive moves there as opposed to a stationary. Yeah, when you have a quarterback that's elusive, like a Russell Wilson, Josh Allen, those guys, Patrick Mahomes, you, you know, you can't have that internal clock where, okay, I know the ball's supposed to be thrown. I got to turn and run and chase the football and try to get downfield in case there's a fumble or in case I need to peel a guy off the pile. What you're doing much more now is you're reacting to whatever your defensive player is doing. It's a little bit like when you're playing defensive back in man coverage and you're following your guy, you're watching his eyes because you can't see the football. You can't see what's going on behind you. Same thing as an offensive tackle. I'm watching that defensive end and I'm cueing off of his eyes. As soon as his eyes go this way, boom, I got to chase him because there's a good chance that all of a sudden Russell Wilson has extended the play and he's running out of the pocket and I got to do whatever I can by hook or by crook to get my head in front of this guy and get one last shove to be able to give Russell that half a second that he needs to go hit Tyler Lockett down the field for that big play. So um, it's much different than you got a Ben Roethlisberger. You got those older quarterbacks who are much more, this is where I'm going to be. They're going to be right where they're supposed to be. And once your guy turns and runs downfield, you know, the ball has been delivered. It's not like Ben's scrambling back there trying to make plays with his feet. When you have that college coach, successful coach who goes into the NFL, Urban Meyer, 
what's the what's the wrong thing for that college coach to do once he gets to an NFL locker room? <laughs> the one wrong thing? I think we're seeing a lot of the wrong things and a lot of the difficulties from Urban. Honestly, I think the hardest thing for Urban Meyer is that he had no NFL experience. And so the hardest thing then is hiring your staff. And there were some whispers coming out this week already that there was a lot of friction between the guys that he brought in from college that he was comfortable with, that he had a relationship with, that he wasn't going to have to teach every single thing that he wanted to those guys and the guys that he brought in that had the NFL experience because it is a different culture in the NFL and in college. There is a lot of different concepts and schemes and how you want to run your practice, how you need to treat your players like a little bit more like professionals, like men to get the most out of them. And so I think the learning curve is already really steep when you're a coach that spent most of the time in college and you make that transition to the pro game. We've seen it so many times, but it's even worse when you have no NFL experience because typically you're putting together a staff that has half of the guys that are like your guys and then half the guys that are NFL guys that you don't really know, but that have been recommended for you that you've hired um, without really having any relationship with. And there's going to be a lot of friction there. There's going to be friction between the guys that were college coaches that are trying to coach the NFL players like they're still in college, where it's more about trying to motivate them in a lot of different ways to get them to play hard. Whereas in the NFL, a lot of those guys are self-motivated and they're motivated by money. They're motivated by feeding their family. They're motivated because they could get cut at any moment. And so I think it's a lot more about teaching at the NFL game and versus in college is about motivating and developing and just teaching the values and the fundamentals of football, hard work, toughness, being on time. That doesn't really fly as much in the NFL. You can see Joe Thomas, NFL Network's NFL game day kickoff Thursday at six Eastern ahead of the Giants Washington game on Thursday night football. Do you think Ron Rivera brings in Cam Newton? That's a great question. I, I, I didn't hear um, what the injury situation to the big beard man is. I, I know he hurt his hip, but I'm, I'm not sure how long he's out. I still like Fitzpatrick with that team because that defense is so good. I thought I think he played pretty well yesterday. Um, and at this point, it's difficult to bring in a quarterback, have them learn the entire offense and get on the same page with your pass catchers. Um, unless you're going to bring in Cam and say, hey, use your legs. We want you to scramble and, you know, kind of change the offense a little bit more. It's more RPO type stuff, quarterback power, doing some of the things that he did in New England. Then maybe you think about it. But I think if they're going to keep the same offense and continue to just try to throw the football, then I don't think it's a great fit. Good to talk to you as always, Joe. We'll be watching on Thursday night. Thank you, buddy. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. That's Joe Thomas, NFL Network analyst, former Browns All-Pro offensive tackle, and will end up in Canton in the Hall of Fame.